sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Alrighty then, welcome to the After Hours of TC Rastani, the podcast. I'm TC Rastani, emanating from the Palatial Podcast Penthouse, and I'm here with the esteemed panel of experts. We're going to go around the horn right now and introduce them to you all. The greatest celebrity stalker of all time, the one and the only South Boston Jeff. Hey, 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 yeah, how you doing? How goes? How goes? How goes? <laughs> it sounds like it's going pretty good. The Hell one it's... and the only, my mentor, the host of Ricky Bittman's Jukebox, exclusively on Spotify, who's a little nocturnal right now, the one and the only Ricky Bittman. Hello, Mickey, mm, Ricky. Uh... What? A, a long trip back from uh, Nashville. We'll get into that in a few seconds. But I've been up since 2 a.m. Okay. And over here, the man who never sleeps because he's the Energizer mm. Bunny, the mm. milkman himself, Quincy Briscoe. And how are you doing tonight? You have a lot of energy, Quincy. All right. So let's get to the topic at hand. Mm. Why are you passed out, Ricky Bibbon? I don't know. I, I was telling you, I, I, uh, I just couldn't sleep. I, just, and I'm a good sleeper. I told people, but if sleeping was a competition... If it was a sport, I, I, I'd, I'd excel. Gold medalist? Yeah. But I, I woke up at 2 a.m. You know, you know, you know you start, your mind starts going. You start thinking of things, you know, things in life. You know, you know just things you got to take care of business, things, in the, you know. And the next thing you know it, it's 5.40 in the morning. I was, I've, been awake, I've been awake 17 hours approximately right really? now. Really? <sighs> Get the caffeine out for you. I'm telling you, I'm tired. So what, what, what do you think attributes to that? I don't know. I just, this is the second a, time. Do you, have a late, do you have a late gig somewhere? As a matter of fact, I, I, I heard you, you know what? It's funny you should mention that. I, got I heard a, I you got, had a good show. I, I did, but you know, the response to my Johnny Cash special, I'm going to be very honest with you, was not quite what I thought it was going to be. Really? What, what, what do you think about that? What do you think that is? I don't, I don't know. And I, and I promoted it. I shared it. I, I put uh, stickers all over uh, uh, Tennessee, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, the listens just really haven't... I am, you know, Tosh says, listen, you posted it right over Memorial Day weekend. True. Yeah. Everyone's busy, right. and, and it could have just got lost. You can always People, retweet it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I got to do that. I got to throw it back out there. You got, because you, I, you got, yeah, it was a good episode. I enjoyed you, it. I, I think it, it's the episode I'm the most proud of. Really, yeah, it, 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 it always is the like uh, the the people's choice to decide who they want to yeah. uh, who they want to pay tribute to, who they yeah. want their Memorial Day to be to be. Tributed to. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And I just, you know, so maybe that, you know, that's kind of in the back well, of my Well, the beauty of this is it really isn't timely. There's no date stamp to it or anything no. like that. No, no, no. So I, you can, you can rebroadcast this. And I you appreciate know. you saying that because I think, it's I think. It's the truth. I, it's the truth. But I just, I get very down on myself. Well, you know, I, because you're a professional. Yeah. And you're I was, a professional I was entertainer. About, and that episode took so long to put together because I wrote it. No. Rather than just Galen and I sitting there going off the top of our head like we do, right. I actually wrote it. It was kind of like a VH1 behind the scenes. Well, it was a passion piece music. for you. Yeah. I know how big yeah. of a fan of Johnny Cash you yeah. are. And I, and I, uh, so for was, those of you who are listening right now, go to Spotify right now. Look please. up Ricky D Ricky Bickman's Jukebox, yep. Johnny Cash episode. What episode number was episode it? Episode 50. Episode 5-0. The, the big episode. Half a century mark right there. Yeah. Listen to the Johnny Cash special. I mean, it's a great episode. It can go any time of the year. Year. I mean, you could be sitting True. in the middle of the winter and listening to it with the wind howling outside and enjoying it. I mean, that's the beauty that is, of, these, of these podcasts. I didn't think of that, and I appreciate that. I'm, I already feel better. There you go. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, I think you need to get some shut-eye in the wind. Uh, yeah, well, right, right from here, I'm going to go right to bed. You look at it, because, I've, you know, I, I've known you for most of my life, and this is like the most tired I've seen. I've yeah. seen you perform like 48 hours straight, yeah, and yeah, you didn't yeah. look this tired. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, need, I need a boost, if you know what I mean. You need a little boost, huh? Yeah, but, I, and I, and I, but I'll tell you right now, after Nashville, no boost for at least another few weeks. A couple, you know, <laughs> we, we, we get the medicine man over here if you need anything. I'll tell over you, there. I could use some of that. Our right own now. pharmacy over there, South Boston Jeff. Drank a lot of alcohol. But that's well, what you do on vacation, right? I don't know. I've been on a vacation in a long time. <laughs> but uh, Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you run into any uh, any legends down there? I did not. Well, you know, there's, I'll tell you, there's legends in the making. The talent that you see in Nashville, Tennessee, any time of day you go into these honky-tonks, that's what they call honky-tonks on Broadway, you never know what you're going to see. And you see talented young people just singing their hearts out. They know every song. They're great musicians. It's just wonderful. Well, you sent me that clip of Eastbound and Down. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that, and they, that's a big one. And they that band is uh, Lefty Ferguson and the Right Hand Band uh, playing right out of, I think that was from the stage, uh, which is right on Broadway, right next to Jack's Barbecue, and it's... Uh, I said this was Quincy's, one of Quincy's favorite songs. 
That's so awesome. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> But lots uh, thank of, you. Yeah, lots we, uh, of, we were uh, actually talking about that on like uh, on my last clouded conversations when I asked him uh, what like uh, some of his favorite movie soundtracks. And that, that, that's well, a good uh, one. may I thank uh, the very special uh, band. Lefty, and, Lefty Ferguson played Le- that for me. Okay, uh, Lefty Ferguson. This is uh, Quincy Briscoe. And may I thank you for the very special dedication and the very mm-hmm. special selection that good. you've uh, selected for me, Eastbound and Down. Yeah, mm-hmm. some uh, very uh, like uh, the filler material for, by Quincy Briscoe goes way back on this station. Nice. Everything. Well, um, this is a very special thank you uh, to Lefty. It was good. Thank you. Unbelievable. Now, how was the barbecue down there? Oh, my God. There's a place called Martin's Barbecue. If you're ever in Nashville, Martin's is about a five, eight-minute walk right off of Broadway. The brisket... The pulled chick, the pulled uh, pulled chicken, and the pulled pork. I mean, you just can't go wrong. I'm a big rib guy. Oh my god, the ribs! Rippy's on the corner of Broadway and Fifth. I want to say, great place for ribs. They also have ribs at Martin's as well. Martin's had a band there that night. The guy sounded exactly like Screaming Jay Hawkins. Yeah, and they were just tremendous. And it was just. He just said something that uh, uh, caught my interest. Uh, you were a big uh, rib guy and everything. Yeah. Do they have a vegan version of ribs? <laughs> they do. They do not. I didn't even pick up. on You're right. That's right. If they um, Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You can you can get some tofu and throw barbecue sauce on it, I guess. But uh, th- actually, at the Chinese food restaurants, they do have a version of a spear that isn't that bad. Oh, but if I was going down to that's Nashville, vegan? yeah. If I was going down to Nashville, Tennessee, you'd have to. Break. I'd have to get the real. You, thing. you would. You would. Th- have there's to. no way. Yeah, For one day, you know, yeah. I'm not going to you know eat you know like a thousand ribs that day. You get good ribs around here. Rob Lynch in South Boston has a uh, ribageddon. He calls it. It's an annual annual event. Last year it was in early July. This year it's July 8th. And uh, he invites all his buddies from Southie. <laughs> That's Ben Gardner's boat performs in the yard. Uh, Great band. Oh, yeah. Uh, I yeah. will and, be attending. Yeah, you'll be at the uh, Ribbageddon? Yeah, Southie uh, is my hometown. Yeah, and you know what I got? I got uh, my family reunion on that day, and I've never been. I'm going to tell you right now. Have you ever been to one of these, the Ribbageddon? <laughs> no, it is. Uh, this will be my first. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to tell you right now. Do not eat breakfast. Because I'm going to tell you, Rob makes the absolute best ribs I've ever had, including Nashville, including Memphis, and including around. Okay, Miami. that's uh, always uh, my secret when we go to the uh, to, to the Nordic, the Nordic Lodge. Lodge. I never eat breakfast, so I can get the uh, so I can take down as much lobster yeah. as I can. His really? ribs, I will tell you, it's amazing what he does for with food. He's he's the best. I loved I love barbecue ribs. Oh. Country style ribs are my favorite. Yeah. In fact, uh, it's a specialty that I make at my barbecues. I can't have them, but I make them for how the people. How do you do that? I, I don't know how you do that. It's it's willpower. It's willpower. Mm. It's also it's uh, it's 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 uh, I have my reasons. Yeah, good, good. I mean, I, I wish I had that willpower. Yeah, I think it's uh, he uh, like uh, like him ingesting the fumes of the meat and everything <laughs> can be uh, like a filler for him. Maybe. Well, when, That's I it. come I've come to the conclusion after becoming vegan a couple of years ago. It's really the sauces that this stuff is cooked in that you're actually tasting. Yeah, in most cases, yeah. I mean, you know, right. if you took if you took a slab of meat, didn't put anything on it, it's probably not going to taste that good. But yeah. I can definitely taste the difference between pig and chicken and cow. Yes, you can. No sauce, I could tell you. Right. Whatever. Yeah, but um, that's the thing about the. Uh, you brought up a good point. When you're uh, tasting things that, let alone such as duck. If you don't put the sauce on it, you're going to get the true taste of the duck. Very that, gamey taste. A, a jammy taste. It's like the dark meat of a turkey. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't mind duck once in a while. Yeah. A little there, used to, um, there used to be a place in Quincy, not not you, <laughs> uh, Quincy, Mass. We used to call it the International Buffet. I used to go there wow. with none other than Quest. Remember that guy? Oh, jeez. And uh, Mr. 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 What night was Mr. it? Mr. Thursday night. Thursday night. With his little, uh, you know, cat in a hat hat, you know. Shout out Quest. Shout out to the Quest Meister out there. Well, we used to go to this place called the International Buffet mm. over in Quincy. It was in a strip mall. Hey, everything under the sun that you probably want mm. there. And I tried uh, Peking duck for the first time now, mm-hmm. and it was very oily and greasy, yeah, and it was so good. Yeah, very fatty meat. It was great. Yeah. I mean, was it as good as a tur- Thanksgiving turkey dinner? No. no. But, you know, every once in a while, you know, it was, it was and it was crispy. The skin was very crispy. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I remember about eating. I actually didn't know what, uh, like, uh, Peking duck was until, uh, until uh, being an 80s child, until I saw the movie Ghostbusters. There was one <laughs> scene in Ghostbusters. I didn't know. 
the, ghost. when they were running, yeah, when they uh, caught a jo- uh, when they caught a ghost in a Chinese restaurant, and it showed the three of them all wa- walking out with their own roasted ducks and everything. Yeah, those hats on and, too, yeah, yeah, and they had the the heads on them and, and such. And I I didn't know it was roasted duck at the time, but like uh, I was like, oh, why do they still have the heads on them? Yeah. Well, but, they, uh, well, you didn't remember that at the end of the Christmas story. Christmas story. Yeah. Well, I thought it was, he said Chinese turkey in that. Oh, movie. Okay, well, it was yeah, actually yeah, duck, but, but he yeah. did say, oh, it's a beautiful duck, but. Uh, it's smiling at us. <laughs> oh, that goes for any kind of meat. Yeah, you should but, uh, try to get the true taste of the meat, then you can put the barbecue sauce on it afterwards. But that to bring you- up the Christmas story, I know, uh, sorry to cut you off, but to bring up the Christmas story, the old fa ra 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 Yeah, now one of the greatest uh, horror, one of the greatest uh, Christmas movie, beloved Christmas I movies of all time. I would say it is the greatest Christmas movie yeah. of all time. Well, yeah. one of the most uh, beloved ones is Incredibly Racist. With that scene, well, uh, it, it, rah, 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 well, you got to remember it took place in the forties. That's oh, right. Yeah. We were in we're at war with J- Japan, so you oh, know, of course. So you know, nowadays it would never happen. But you know, a movie that was taking place in the nineteen forties would have done that. Yeah, I guess you're right. But even, even 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 like 19. the maitre d was correct on the the uh, kitchen guys. Right. No 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 no. Far, <laughs> not far, rah, 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 rah. La 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 la. Sing like this. Yeah. Deck the horse yeah. with bows of hoary. Far ra 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 ra. La la why are we doing la, la. this? <laughs> uh, because we're Say uh, something just, else. <laughs> because we can. That's why. Jingle bell, jingle okay. bell. Ah. <laughs> Quincy Scrooge over there. Bah humbug. Bah humbug. Now here, I want to go on the record here. I don't know if you heard about this. What? That uh, Mel Gibson is going to be making a four-part series about the thirty-four billion dollar sex trafficking industry in the world, and he's going to drop a lot of big-time names. So, oh god, he'll let, be dead soon. I was just going to say, I don't think Mel. If you're listening to this, Mel Gibson did not commit suicide. Yeah, we'll say it now. <laughs> right, he did not commit suicide. You heard it here first on uh, After Hours. And I think Mel needs to go out and get twenty-four hour security now. Because it was all over the internet that he's going to do this. So I mean, mm, I mean, a, look at a lot of the people who wanted to expose the pedophile ring in Hollywood, and they ended uh, up dead. Corey Feldman, well, yeah. Corey Feldman, but uh, he's, he's not, not dead. dead yet. No, but, because uh, he didn't drop because uh, he didn't drop any names. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Hayes was going to expose it. Yeah, dead. That kid from the Fast and the Furious, Paul Walker, yep. dead. Ooh. So you know, and there's a few other people. Mel, yeah. you better watch out, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, maybe Corey Heim was going to drop a ball or something. That's why he turned yeah, up. Yeah, dead. Maybe an eight ball. But, he, he was um, <laughs> he was going to. He 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 had some serious allegations. That right. Well, d- dead. Yeah. Yeah. So, Charlie Shane saying. was. He See, was the reason they won't kill Corey uh, Fel- Feldman because he's cooked too much light on him. It's yeah. like it's like the guy who brought the, the Kennedy assassination to court, Jim Garrison. Yep, yep, yep. They didn't kill him because it was too much. That's yeah. why they haven't killed Alex Jones either. Yeah. Because too much light is on. <laughs> <them>. <laughs> So that's why Feldman is still kicking. But it's, it's, yeah, I'm getting chills. It's, it's very scary when you think about it. So if, if we if we come to the conclusion that Mel Gibson, I don't know, a couple months from now was found mm. hanging somewhere, he, he didn't tie the knot. Let's just put it that way. As Sinatra tried to tell Woody Allen, stay out of the kinder. Garden? Kinder. Well, oh. That's probably what he was, what he was trying to say, because you know, Woody was going after his daughter. Oh, right, right, right. Woodman, as I told you, stay out of the I kinder. I bet uh, one of the first people he's going to out, now like uh, it came for first, is uh, his old Mad, Mad Max buddy, Bruce Spence. I happen to know that. Uh, mm. Well, I've happened to hear some rumors from a from a satanic cult survivor that he is deeply involved in these uh, Australian cults. I, I'm sure he's going to do that, but I'm sure there'd be other people that like would like on Epstein's list, like Tom Hanks and Rob Reiner. And, uh, you know, have you, have you seen the list, supposed list of uh, these people? I, I took a screen grab of it one day you know, and read it, and it's been since deleted. Right. I don't yeah, have it on my uh, phone like, anymore. Uh, I, I just thought I'd bring that up because he's uh, he's somebody I've known has been like, uh, and uh, and he's still working. He was, uh, I believe he was in one of the Star Wars movies. He was. He, he was, was uh, He was in uh, The Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, like, uh, he was heavily made up and everything. He played some, quarter, some sort of bad guy. But when I seen him, I just shook my head and said, can't believe he He's still working, mm. that bastard. Well, he's because in Hollywood. I'm, that's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this progresses out there. But you heard it here first. Mel Gibson did not, yeah, kill, did yeah. not kill himself if he, if he ends up dead. Wow. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Well, a little somber note here down on the program. Yeah, yeah. Our longtime close yeah. personal friend, a good friend of the show, 
the late great, the Iron Sheik passed away this week yeah. at the age of 81. Now, we all down here, with the exception of Quincy, had had a personal relationship with the Iron Sheik. Mm-hmm. We're going to go into this in detail with Colonel Bull Montana, who knew him better than all of us mm-hmm. down here, who mm-hmm. actually wrestled with him back in the 1980s. But the Iron Sheik was a, was a unique individual. If you got to know him behind the scenes, he was a very personal person, a very nice person. Very nice man. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he just, he would get riled up, you know, because he yeah. was on, he had, you know, he had some demons. We're not going to mm-hmm. say he didn't. It's very mm-hmm. public knowledge out there. And uh, he loved you, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Well, he like, did. I will say that, the, like, having the Sheik around, it is just a blast. Yeah, it is yeah. an absolute blast. That, but, picture, that picture of you two together, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. smiles on both their faces. It's just yeah. Like, like uh, the very first time I, I, I met him, uh, so, like, I heard he he was coming down here and everything, so I rushed down and, and everything. Like, uh, so I I sat down and uh, like, uh, and I asked him for a smoke and everything, and he's like, "Why does this motherfucker have? Why does why does this motherfucker have to have, uh, buy, buy my cameras, my cigarettes?" And I, oh, <laughs> as I uh, slipped a nice joint into his cigarette pack. <laughs> oh, bless you, brother. Bless you. What is your name, Jeff? I Jeff from South that. Boston. It's from South Boston. So he is actually the person who coined the phrase South Boston Jeff by the way and, wow. and, and he loved the medicine man oh, yeah. that's interesting I never where is that. that South Boston Jeff <laughs> that, 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 you know, that, that lovely cocksucker I want my medicine <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved you and probably the highlight is when we had him down here making jabroni pepperoni pizza yeah, yeah I remember my Doc McMurphy was in Doc on that. McMurphy uh, Sabrina he loves Sabrina he went out to the dinner with Sabrina well, who does I mean you know that's true he did, uh, I love the little Sabrina I love the little Sabrina Whatever he's saying. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, hats off to our good friend, the Iron Sheik. We're going to go into detail on him. A lot of Sheiky stories that we had over the course of our, our encounters with him. And he loved the, the Kowloon. He loved the Kowloon mm-hmm. in the early two, uh, 2010, 2011 areas when we uh, we were hanging with the Sheik. And it was uh, it was quite an adventure, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. It was so a you, long day. It mm-hmm. was a long day. So if you want to go on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash After Hours TC, and just search in there, Sheik Pizza, and you get to see the Iron Sheik making his world-famous jabroni pepperoni pizza. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Now, Jeff, I'm noticing your t-shirt right now. Oh, yeah. Looking across here at the podcast penthouse. That is a I, let me, that is a Roosevelt Franklin t-shirt. Look at that, Quincy. Quincy, did you notice that? Oh, yeah. That is awesome. It. Yes, this is, uh, well, I got like uh, uh, Roosevelt Franklin, who was kicked off of Sesame Street in 1973 for <laughs> actually being a racial stereotype. I got to show my support to Roosevelt Franklin, who was born in 1971, mm. just like me. That's the name of his album, The Year of Roosevelt Franklin, 1971. But uh, He's it's, saying Mobity Mosley! Yeah, and uh, it's uh, Roosevelt Franklin's elementary school because uh, us good fans know that he uh, taught an ele- ele- elementary school class. He was mm-hmm. like a he was like a remedial teacher. I was about Franklin <laughs> Elementary School. It is Rosa Bar Franklin at that elementary school. Yeah, uh, yeah. To say, you see, I, I knew Quincy would get super excited. I, like, I should have known from when See, Quincy, if you wore normal shirts other than your button up shirt, we'd get you a shirt. Why do you. Here's a question I've always wanted to know. Why do you always wear button-up shirts? I've known you for 27 years. You've never had a T-shirt, a pair of shorts, or anything else. What's the deal with this gimmick? I like it. Oh, That's oh. all there is to it. I like it. <laughs> all right. Now, I understand. I heard through the grapevine that you want to go up to the world-famous Salisbury Beach, and you want to do some urban surfing on, on, the, uh, on, a, on a boogie board to reenact the scene of Greg Brady from the Hawaii episode. Why not? Yeah, um, well, uh... It is summer, and uh, uh, people like, uh, well, so why don't we surprise our crowds and do something a little... Okay, but I would, are you going to wear a swimsuit, or are you going to wear this outfit? An outfit, just a plain... Uh, right. Okay. Uh, and uh, do some body serving, and... Uh, Aren't you a little nervous? No! What's to be nervous Have of? you seen the waves episode? We were talking about Ricky Bittman used to park his Winnebago up there. Yeah, they're strong waves. Well, they're, come on. You need waves to serve. Okay, okay. They're not as big as the waves in the opening of uh, Hawaii Five-O, but they're pretty damn big, Quincy. Oh, or the well, ones good, in times I did battle some huge, waves. Then I'm going to do some real good surfing then, aren't I? 
All right, you, you know <laughs> keep your eyes peeled up there because I'll tell you right now, you know what those waves are famous for? Yeah. Taking the tops right off the bathing suits. It happens all the time. Well, I'm going to come in uh, uh, on a surfer with a style, aren't I? Yeah. Now, uh, it's like, um, just you wait and see. <laughs> this, this I can't wait for. Now, mm. will you be wearing a good luck charm? Kind of uh, like uh, Greg Brady. Who's going to wear a of course, you know. Uh, I used to have a tiki, but it got stolen by bad oh, warriors. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake, stick in a tiki! Ugh. You know what? Of course, uh, what was that, Vincent Price? Vincent yes. Price. Oh, for God's sakes, take any tiki! Take any tiki. Ugh. Well, we're going to do this. Oh, uh, we're going to do this on a Sunday morning when there's no one there. And You're going to have to get there real early. In, ca- in case you get sucked out to sea. Actually, no. I have people that are going to be out there on boats spotting you out there in case something happened. Because Salisbury Beach is known for the undertow. Do you know what an undertow is, Quincy? No. What's an undertow? Okay. When the waves come crashing in and then they go back out to sea, they suck you out with it. Well, come on. Yeah, well, uh, what's what's going to make this whole thing so uh, action-packed? You know? I'm going to okay, go out okay. there. Okay, I'm just warning you now. He's got balls, i got to tell you. I'll tell you right. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to double the styrofoam surfboard. We're going to tape these things together, and then I'll have a stronger surfboard. Okay. With two dress shirts. And then uh, we're going to go out there, <laughs> get on the waves, and ride the waves in, as um all the surfers would say, you know, and then... Um, you hang know, ten. That's what they say. No, what, 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 what were the guys the called? They say hang ten. Hang. I'm gonna hang ten. Here you go. All right. Yeah. Now let, let me just ask Ricky Bittman this. Now Ricky Bittman, you spent a lot of time out on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. You hung around with the, you know a lot of surfers back in the day. You know, mm-hmm. you were down in Venice Beach performing with like Moon Doggy and all these other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think would be a great surfer name for Quincy? Hmm. Doctor Sex Wax. Talk to Sex Wax. Sex Wax is what a lot of professional surfers use to wax their surfboards. It's called Sex Wax. So we'll call you Dr. Sex Wax. We're waxing up our surfboards. <laughs> we can't wait for June. <laughs> the Beach Boys. Everybody's gone surfing. Surfing USA. <laughs> This it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be fantastic. We will have cameras rolling. I wish I could be this enthusiastic about anything. But you know, well, you need to sleep. Yeah, that's what it is. My well, God. So what gonna, we're gonna do, Quince? We're gonna sometime in July. We're gonna do this when it's kind of really warm. Right now, the water's too cold. All right, because we're recording this in the beginning of the June. The water's too cold. Right now, yeah. So we're gonna do this probably sometime in late July. Yeah. Good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to hang ten. There you yeah, go, uh, Doctor Sex Wax, hanging ten. Gonna go get some caffeine, a big tall caffeine. <laughs> I don't think you need D's. caffeine. Big tall double D's. <laughs> I'm gonna get a tall double D's <laughs> and go hang ten. Wildfires. He's talking wildfires. I'll be ready. I tried not to cough. I'm sorry. Fire. All right, so let's let's get into these wildfires here. I wanna I wanna personally thank Canada. And especially our good friend Sherry up there for sending yeah. us she these wildfires. The fire. No. Or did she? She didn't start the fire. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. <laughs> start the fire. <laughs> well, you should put out the fire with all the milk you got. <laughs> so I was looking at pictures from New York City. It looked like the surface yeah. of Mars. Yeah. It was insane. Have you seen these pictures, Jeff? No, not at all. I heard, uh, like, uh, so what's there, like, uh, big brush fires everywhere? In Canada, there's these giant fires, and all the smoke and haze are coming down this way. And it, it, it like, it really hit New York City hard. And everything looks like uh, it's orange and what. It looks like something out of, like, uh, like Tatooine in Star Wars. It was just, it was just awful looking. Oh, boy. Yeah, this was, like, this afternoon in New York City. That's the sky. Oh jeez! Yeah, it's uh, a clear day. Those aren't clouds. That's that's the that's the oh, smoke. That, that, yeah. I haven't you seen know what that like looks that like since uh, September 11th. God yeah. damn it! Yeah. You know what that looks like? No. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. Well, kind of mm. like Dragnet on a rough bum, day. Bum, 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 bum. Bam, 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 bam. The story you're about to see is true. The names were been changed from Jack Dearson. That's exactly what that looks like. Is that, no? is that a Quinn Martin production? No, a Quinn no, Martin it's... production is um, The what Streets of San Francisco. Yeah, a Quinn right. Martin production. It was also Barnaby Jones. Cannon. And Cannon. Barnaby Cannon. Jones. Bam, 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 yeah. bam, bam, Manix. Manix. I never watched Manix. Manix uh, oh, great show. Great theme song. 
What was that one with uh, with uh, Kirk Douglas there? The, or was oh, it Michael? Streets of San Francisco. Michael yeah. Douglas and Kyle Malden. Kyle Malden. Oh, yeah. Don't leave good home one. without it. Yeah, yeah good one. Yes, uh, I'm, I remember that like yesterday. You know, remember what? Yeah, that, that car there. What, the um, the yeah. car there. That the they American used Express. American Express cards. Don't leave home without them. That's right. That was his thing. It was his commercial. Do you have an American Express card, Quint? Nope. Oh, well, they, they, you left home without it, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Now what would you now what would you buy if you had a credit card? I don't know a dozen like uh, suits. <laughs> a dozen Ooh, suits. That's good. Yeah. That's a good investment. Okay, mm-hmm. that's not a bad deal. I, thought, yeah, I was I, expecting like a TV, like Jim Ignatowski. <laughs> <laughs> I got my, I got satellite. I got uh, I got VCR. <laughs> I got stations from across the world. That was the one where they were debating between Delawareans and Delawareites. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this is gonna be a dog fight. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually rewatching Taxi. They put it uh, the first season up on Amazon Prime. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the first season of Taxi really isn't that good. No, I mean it's good compared to today's standards. It's outstanding. Right. But just that character, John Burns. Yeah, yeah. Just he, brings the show down. He really did. I mean, he wasn't a bad actor, nope. Randall Carver, and the character could have been more well written. Yeah. But when you have all these. You know, exorbitant characters like Louis, Latka, Elaine, oh, Alex, uh, Tony, Bobby, the and cast. then of course Jim yep. shows up. It was just, he was just the, you know, which of these kids is doing his own thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And- laka, 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 laka. And I think they originally tried to build the show almost around him. It was, yeah, because he yeah. was the new kid in town. Um, and he just vanished. They didn't, yeah. they didn't explain what happened when, when season two happened. They, yeah, that's right. He just, he just, he just disappeared. disappeared. Was it was it you that was telling me that Judd Hirsch didn't want to be on Taxi, and he was like he was trying to get out of it, and he said, "Tell tell you what, I'll do the show provided they put my name before the title of the show." Right, right. Judd Hirsch in. <laughs> so they said, "Yeah," and he's, and he's and like, he, "I can't get out." And of I can't show. get out of it. That's so. funny. And today, what is he remembered for? Taxi. Taxi. That's Absolutely. it. Nothing he else. Quit. <laughs> Nothing else. Oh, uh, Independence Day. That guy from Without a Trace. The cop from Without a Trace. I could fall. <laughs> I love that movie. I do, too. I said, where is Hank? <laughs> uh, Mike from Sotheo always says that. Uh, we'll be at a crowded bar, and all of a sudden you hear in the background, I could fall. <laughs> what was your favorite episode of Taxi, Quincy? The Spell and Bee episode. Okay. Where, where they all played Substitute Father. That would have been season one, wouldn't it have been? Yeah, it would have. And um, the cookies. Dude, what's with all these cookies? Oh, they're big bad guy fired. He quit! What are we in a time machine? Yeah, you just did that two seconds ago. There's a show that never had a final episode. No, too bad. It, it just ended. You know that show was originally going to be on one of the first shows on HBO? Really? Well, here's, here's the history of Taxi. I'm a huge Taxi fan. Now that I've, re, I've, I've re, you know, rediscovered it on Amazon Prime. Worth checking out. It's, if you haven't seen it, look at the talent pool that's on oh this God. program. Mm-hmm. They went on to become legends. Well, Taxi was originally on ABC from 1975 to 1980. No, excuse me, 1978 to 1982. Mm-hmm. It got canceled. And HBO had an interest in bringing... They, this is before The Sopranos, Sex in the mm. City, and all the other ones. They wanted to have <laughs> their own type of show. Mm. And the guy who created Taxi, um, James L. Brooks, the director... Yep. From The Simpsons. From the, yeah. the Simpsons and you know a million other things, basically said on our very first episode, if we are on HBO, the very first scene is Elaine Nato topless. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> it had to have been. Just to say, we're no longer on network television. Wow, that would have been something. Can you imagine how good that show would have oh, been on HBO? God. Not oh, just for that. Yeah, but, but still. But just, just, you know, the reins were done and they could have said anything they wanted oh, on that yeah, program. Like a, like a Louis De Palma swearing yeah. and everything. You know, like a, like a Jim doing all kinds of crazy Drugs. drug yeah. shit. <laughs> Latka having to wash the taxis like uh, Travis Bickle in Taxi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I have to uh, wipe the cum off the back seat. <laughs> Other nice be blood. <laughs> that would have been an awesome show if they did that. Can we swear on this podcast? Of course we can. I got to tell you something I saw the other day. Have you seen the movie Entertainment? You uh, not yet, but it's on my list. You, so you know you're aware of this film? Yes. Okay. I just turned it on out of the blue last night, right? Okay. 
So Tasha Lent is milling around the house, and she sees me watching this. Every now and then she comes in to see what movies I'm watching. And now this movie is on. And the first, it, 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 the, the opening of it, the first 30 minutes are fantastic, okay? What is this movie about? It's about, I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Who's in it? I, I, there's really no uh, established stars in it. But it's about uh, like a stand-up comedian. And he's not the best stand-up comedian in the world. And I, I, John C. Riley is in it. Okay. Um, this is the joke she walks in on. Because I said to her, this is a really interesting movie. Watch. He was, he was doing his stand-up act. He goes, why, why, why does E.T. like Reese's Pieces so much? <laughs> and, of course, nobody is quiet. The club is dead. He goes, because on his planet, they have the same flavor as cum. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me and walks right out of the room. I can't stop laughing. Now, why would I, I, I can see Jeff? Like Jeff gets it. I mean, <laughs> it's not just the saying of it. It's just the whole like eat, all I can picture is ET eating those things. <laughs> oh, you know, as, a, as a kid, you know what ET used to stand for in the, in the neighborhood. What? The extra testicle. Oh, jeez, I never heard that one. <laughs> but imagine that, and, and she looks at me like, do you find this funny? And I'm like, <laughs> just the fact that somebody would say that in public is what, what's funny. So I gotta, now i got to watch the rest of the movie. All right, well, let us know they have other, any uh, but references. Well, I, yeah, definitely, but check the movie out, because I can tell you right now, we would all like it. Just Does it take place in the 80s? or does No, it no, no, I think it's at present day. Okay. He visits the airplane graveyard in Vegas when he's, uh, that's like the opening scene. Which I've always wanted to do. Wasn't that in Can't Buy Me Love? Remember that movie? Yes, yes, it was. With yeah. Patrick Dempsey? Yeah, yeah. They went to the airplane graveyard. I always found that oh, fascinating. Oh, yeah, 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 they did. I was, mm -hmm. yeah, like, uh, I, I know, I always wanted to know what American Bandstand was. That, uh, that movie, but, uh, oh. yeah, the airplane graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, we met a, a lot place. of people from that movie. That was a great movie, Can't Buy Me Love. It was an excellent movie. I always remember that. It was Too bad like that girl movie. died. Yeah, Amanda Peterson. Yeah, she was she, she, oh, yeah. She, she, I don't that know what was happened. very surprising. Very surprising. I yeah. mean, I just heard that she died. I was like, what? Of what? Yeah, I mean, she was gorgeous. She was an alcoholic, I guess. I, so I, I, she had something wrong with her. God bless her. She, yeah. was, she was a hottie in that she movie. Was, she one was. One of her friends uh, was actually, uh, one of the, in Can't Buy Me Love, was uh, actually the girl who got her, uh, like Jason rammed her face into the side of the trailer. Oh. Friday the 13th, part six. She was. You are, you are correct, sir. Yes, you yes. are correct. Yeah. Wealth of information. Yeah, but uh, every time I've, um, what's his name? Uh, what's uh, Malachi's name there? Casey Sesmatic? No, Courtney Gaines. Courtney Gaines. Yeah, uh, yeah like uh, I've met him a couple of times. Good but uh, one thing I, I love to say when I when I meet Courtney Gaines is, you shit on my house! Yeah. <laughs> you shit on my house. That is, a, I mean, what's his, has that kid been around forever? Seth Green? He yeah, was that, that was like one of his first movies. As as Ronnie Miller's uh, little brother there. Yeah. I did. I, I remember watching that with my mother. And uh, I, I never saw him out of laugh so hard when uh, he was in the back of the the, the, uh, the the station wagon and the football player fought it into the station wagon. Big, Big John. Yeah. And he just falls out of the back of the station wagon. And my mother's like, I can't, yeah, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. He fell out of the car, just went limp. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, haven't seen this movie, 1987, Can't Buy Me Love, Patrick Dempsey is this big time nerd who Dr. wants to be. Dr. McDreamy. Dr. McDreamy, who wants to become a famous kid in he high school. He wants to be yeah, with, popular. popular. With yeah, the, with the cool wants... kids. And his next door neighbor is a smoking hot uh, blonde, uh, played by the late. Uh, uh, what was her name? Amanda Peterson. Yes. Who was also in the movie Explorers with Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. And he follows her to the mall and because she had an accident with her mother's suede jacket. Suede suit. And yes. had, you know, you know, wine spilt on it by some other I think it was actually one of the jocks that did it. Yeah. And he's been saving up for like ten years to buy this uh, telescope for like fifteen hundred bucks. Yep. It was too great. It was almost too grand, actually. Yeah. Okay, too grand. Yeah. And he makes a deal with her. Listen, I'll pay for your suede jacket if you make me popular. Yeah. And you, yeah, you can, you to, can. You had to get her a new one, actually, yeah. which actually costed two grand. You, you know? can figure out what the rest of the plot was, and uh, and it worked. But it was a, it was one of the, it is one of my favorite classic '80s movies. Very well written. It's not like uh, just these throwaway scripts, right? No, no, it wasn't goofy. Not I a mean, it was, it, was, film. it was, it was, it was a very, very good movie. Yeah. Very good acting, and anytime it's on, I always watch it. I like the when he goes hanging all over me like a cheap fucking suit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I want to remark on something. Jeff, the Franklin shirt. Yes. Now look at Jeff. I'm looking at it. 
you are so color coordinated right now. It's not even funny. Between the glasses, the headband, the shirt, the Franklin shirt, and even your drink. Oh, I try. You paint I, a good I, picture. I really do try and everything. <laughs> and, and, like, and, and, and the headband. I'm telling you, ladies, if you could see this, this I, I'm dressed like a slob right now. Mm, TC's no, very not. relaxed. Well, I mean, you know, I could put a better foot forward, but no, you're not. You're you paint a good picture, Jeff. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I try like I, I've uh, been, even the shades, even yeah, the shades. I've been, I've been, I've been told by people that I coordinate very you well. Do. There's a lot of thought goes into that, and I got to hand it to you because it's not easy. You look like something that would be popping out of an '80s movie right now. Yeah, you'd be you'd be, you'd be like one of Molly Ringwald's friends or something. He in looks a movie. like a director. All right, there you go. Well, uh, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be hanging with no Arnie Miller. Yeah. You remind me of the guy that brought the strippers in uh, in Apocalypse Now for some reason. I, I, that's, hey. what I'm, that's what I'm seeing right now. And he drops the flares yeah, down. Yeah, maybe I'd be uh, like uh, hanging out with John Bender of the Breakfast Club at one of his heavy metal vomit parties. <laughs> Could be. Another great 80s film. I mean, yeah, it is, but it's overrated now. If you, you go back so? and watch it, it doesn't hold up. And it's just you just want to you just want to slap these people. Yeah, the principal, kind of, or the vice principal, was that that guy? Was he the principal or the vice principal? Him and the janitor really stole that movie, I thought. Um, ooh, ooh, Mr. Tierney. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Hey, hey, Carl. Hey, yeah. Carl. <laughs> Your dad the janitor? Uh, what, 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 was, uh, what was the principal's name? I'm drawing a blank here. Um, it, was, it was Paul uh, Mr. Gleason. Vernon. Mr. Vernon. Vernon, yeah. that's right. Paul Gleason, who later went on to play the scumbag uh, cop in Die Hard. Yeah, I had to say, I had to say the note in my head. Dear Mr. Vernon. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And he was in Trading Places. He was Clarence, he was. Clarence Beaks. He was. Um, but yeah, I used to like the, the, the Breakfast Club 100% when I was a kid. And then going back and watching it now, yeah. it's just like, eh. Yeah, really? Okay. It's I not, haven't seen it in a long time. It's not, it's not one of, I guess it's a class. It is a classic. But it's not one of my favorite John Hughes movies it's anymore. It's one when you, when you see it, you don't immediately just find yourself falling into I'll, it. I'll still watch it. Yeah. But as I'm watching it, I'm going like, these people, they slap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to hang with any of these people. Yeah. You know, let alone the nerd. Molly Ringwald's not that attractive. I mean, what's her yeah. name was okay when she got all dolled up in the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Emilio Estevez was a punk. Yep. And Bender was just a dirtbag. I liked Anthony Michael Hall, though. Uh, excuse me. You know what they need? The light didn't come on. What? You know who they need as a principal? You smoke crack, don't you? Look at me. Don't you smoke crack. You know what that does? That kills your brain cells. Batman. No. Who? Joe Clark. That's right. Yeah, but he says I his am principal Joe Batman. Clark. Now you call me Batman. No, he had his own school to take care of. Yeah, yeah he had he his used hands to call me full of Sims. But now you can call me Batman. What? I got thugs, drug dealers, and thugs and everything else trying to get into my school. That's you know, uh, Anthony Michael Hall's little sister, who had appeared in The Breakfast Club, had, had, a, had a little crush on me when I met her. <laughs> that is really? true. That is true. I, I, could, I, I can testify. He huh? can vouch. He can vouch for me. This because was in like, uh, 2005. Yeah, she had, like I was waiting in the line. She's like, "Hi, well, what's your name and everything? Uh, what's your in, uh, what's your uh, email address?" And I wow. was like, uh, "Yeah, I, like, and I wasn't even looking that good. I was, uh, <laughs> I got uh, didn't uh, I got uh, didn't get much sleep. I was half in the bag. Mm. I, like, uh, I was like, uh, but uh, she came over. She was very interested in, in me. So you gave off a vibe." Yeah, I Just, gave off a vibe, and like I and, and I figured out who she was when I got to the front of the line, and I'm talking to Anthony Michael Hall. He's like, "Where you from, man?" And I'm like, "South Boston." He's like, "Cool, I'm from West West Roxbury." Yeah. And I and I said, "Oh, I was where I I knew you were local. We talked about some th certain things." But uh, when he signed his Breakfast Club picture, uh, which was that scene. Um, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to study. We're supposed to go in there and do nothing. Well, Mister, you figure out a way to study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was really uh, Anthony Michael's real life mother and little sister. Wow, I never knew that. That's it, interesting. They were both sitting there at the table with him, and his sister said, uh, "Would you like me to sign it too?" And I looked at her. I was like, "Why?" And I was like, "Oh, oh, oh damn! That's that's you." Oh my Hi. god, that's funny. <laughs> Did she sign it? She signed the back. Why not the front? I didn't know who she was at the time. Oh. All right, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> she probably still thinks about you. Yeah, you should find her. You should find her on social media. Yeah, I should. Now we have a mutual friend, uh, South Boston Jeff and I, a guy by the name of John, who kind of got into a little, 
argument over a pair of sneakers with uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, because- I know. I remember we brought that up to uh, <laughs> like uh, he very humbly uh, like said uh, said that uh, he did not remember it, but we know he did. We he know he a, did. Yeah, because uh, he looked she- over us at, at us like, how the hell do you know that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we went to there's a kid we went known in high school million million, million years ago, uh, named John, who was a great kid who lives over in Europe right now. Johnny, listen to you. Give me a call. And I don't know the actual story, but it had to do with a pair of sneakers. And Anthony Michael Hall was being kind of a dickhead because this is around the time that he was very popular. Mm-hmm. And he was dating a cousin or somebody that what was related to the family that his foster family or a girlfriend. I don't know the exact story. But John was a no-nonsense guy and didn't take shit from anybody. Mm-hmm. And words were exchanged, and Anthony Michael Hall backed down from him. And which he would, because John would have ripped him, you know, a new breakfast club. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and uh, when he, we brought that up, he, he were right. He, he knew what we were talking about, <laughs> but didn't want to sell it. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, here we are in New Jersey. Yeah. All right. He's at a Comic-Con. He's probably getting out of bed that night going, oh, this this was how many years later? That happened in like 1988. This is 2005. So almost wow. 20 years later. All right, we two jabronis from Boston come down and bring this up to him, and he just like looked like and saying to himself, "How the hell do they know that?" <laughs> but we did, and. Uh, you know, the rest yeah. is history. Yeah. And he's like, hey, so, my sister likes you, man. I was like, really? <laughs> Who's your sister? She's like, I am. And I was like, oh, cool. I, I was, uh, I sh- uh, yeah, I wish I could have went over that m- moment again. See, that's what you, if you could go back, how would that scene would have played out different? I want to go back oh, yeah. and do it all over, but I can't go back. That could have been my, uh, my, be- my back door into the, into the John Hughes world. Into the John Hughes Just movies. think, if you actually got married, we could have invited John to the wedding and they could have had a reunion about the sneakers. Sure. Oh, you would have been boy. a better Bender. <laughs> Wouldn't have Jeff play oh, that role better? a million better? times better than Bender. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I where, where the hell is uh, Judd Nelson these days? Yeah. What's the last movie he did? Good question. He was in Maine somewhere, I heard. Well, that's where he's from. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably, yeah. Now, I, now, Jeff, if you were in any... That's a great thing. I can see, Jeff, what, in, in what John Hughes movie would you be in? Other than, obviously, The Breakfast Club. I could see you as, like a, like, a... Not a main character, but, like, a friend of a friend. You know, oh, there's, you know, there's, there's you know, there's Medicine Man or yeah. whatever he is. Yeah, yeah. What movie do you think you'd fit in the best John Hughes movie? Other than Breakfast Club. Well, uh, uh, probably not 16 Candles. Uh, like, uh... uh or may, or may, maybe even uh, like uh, one of uh, one of cousin Eddie's kids in vacation because nice. that is indeed a Johnny Hughes movie. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he had like his daughter who grew pot. Yep. How cool is Stirred this? Stirred the Kool Aid with her hand. So you wanted to be a <laughs> you wanted to be a hick from Kansas and but when a cousin Eddie's offspring. No, no, I'd probably be the guy who hooks uh, who hooks uh, John Bender up with his weed. Mm-hmm. I'd probably be uh, a guy at the heavy metal vomit party. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, yeah, like uh, because he brought up that uh, like uh, the heavy metal vomit party. What that is, I'm probably the guy who throws the heavy metal vomit party. (laughs) There you go. What John Hughes movie do you think you'd be in, Ricky? I I could see myself as as you asked that question. I had to say, I know you're going to ask me that question. I would put myself in uh, planes, trains, and automobiles because I'll tell you right now. Growing up, I had a little bit of both characters, probably more so Del Griffith. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, I could find myself being a Neil Page. And that movie taught me a lot about both personalities mm-hmm. and try to be more like Del Griffith, but, you know, not, not too bad to be on Neil Page once in a while, but, you know, it was one of those things where you could tell I didn't get much sleep, but I just find that that, that movie taught me a lot about myself. Let's just put it that way. The movie that I associate, John Hughes movie, it was directed by Christopher Columbus, but written by John Hughes, was a movie called Only the Lonely. Oh, with uh, Maureen O'Hara. Maureen O'Hara, because I, I, I was Sheedy, right? Yeah. I, I had an Italian father, but I had a very Irish mother, mm-hmm. and she was very old school. Mm-hmm. And that movie kind of was like an autobiography in a way. Wow, yeah. You know, John uh, John Candy had a had a thing for Italian women in the mm-hmm. movie. I have a thing for a lot of Italian women mm-hmm. that you know are you know look like the girl next door, mm-hmm. and had a very strict Irish mother. So watching this movie when it came out, I was like. Man, yeah. does this movie hit home or what? I remember seeing that in the theater. Yeah. Great movie. It really was. John Candy would have been a great dramatic actor if he didn't yeah, die. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, he had a 
One more thing. Uh, like, uh, was uh, some kind of wonderful a John Hughes movie? It was written by John Hughes, but it was directed by Leah Thompson's future husband, Howard Deutsch, who directed Pretty in Pink and The Great Outdoors. Very oh, underrated. Well, very underrated flick. By oh, well, uh, I, I'd love to be in Duncan's gang. Yeah. <laughs> some kind of wonderful? Yeah. It was a great movie. And the, one of the best songs ever to close a movie. Do you ever listen to that song? It was Elvis Presley's Can't Help Following. Right, Falling but who Love. sang it? It, it was, was an Irish band called Lick the Tin. It had a lot of like flutes or yeah, something it in it. with the tin whistle. Right, a tin great, whistle. Great, great version of uh, Can't Help Falling. That was, a, that was one of the one of my favorite movies. Uh, what was it? Like, it wasn't like Back to the Future favorite, no. but I did see it many, many, many times. I had a little crush on the, the, the blonde girl in that. What was her name? Uh, Mary Stuart Masterson. Yes. Was that her name? Mm. Yeah, it was Mary Stuart Masterson. Excuse me. She uh, she looked like NWA Sting. With <laughs> That's the not hair. why I was attracted no, to her. No, I know, I know. No, she's, she's a very pretty girl. Yeah, she was a very beautiful face. Very, very pretty yeah. girl. Yeah. But that scene that of her watching Leah in that, oh, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. locker room where she was well, I bet you like that one. combing her hair. Man, I'm just visualizing that right now. Yeah, that, yeah. That was, that, yeah. Thank God for the pause button. Miss Amanda Jones. Uh, Miss Amanda Jones. Rolling Stones song. Well, there was a lot of uh, Rolling Stones references because yeah. Mary Stuart Masterson's character's name was Watts. That's right. And that's she was right. a drummer. Watts. Jeez, I, I never picked up on that. And what was uh, and what's his name? Um, uh, Barney McFly, the, the original Barney McFly. Eric, Eric Stoltz. Stoltz. His name was Keith. That's right. Interesting. So I, never, the, the, I never ever put that. There together. was a lot of Rolling Stones references mm. in that in that movie. Some it's kind good of water for the jukebox. I'm gonna have to bring Th- this. There up. you go. What's your favorite line from that movie? From that movie, I don't mind. Is I don't know. But what's yours, Jeff? You must have one. We're gonna bring this party down to a nice, respectable level. That's an awesome <laughs> one. But my favorite one is when <clears throat> Eric Stoltz gets out of the shower and he's confronted by his father, who was played by John Ashton, the guy who played um, Goldman. Uh, no, no, that's John no. Ashton. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, John sorry. Ashton. He played um, in Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. <clears throat> oh, Taggart. Taggart in yep. a cup. And he gets all angry and he goes, where's the fucking money, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> that line right there, that's quoted by a lot of me and my high school friends. Just oh, yeah. out of nowhere, you just stare and look at somebody and go, where's the fucking money, Keith? <laughs> I, have the, I have the soundtrack to that on vinyl. The vinyl do you? One, yeah. You'll have to do a jukebox dedicated. And now, yeah, yeah. now you know all these Rolling Stone references yeah, are in this movie. Cool. I got that uh, the whole vinyl soundtrack. Miss Amanda Jones. Good, good stuff. I remember that. It was movie. a great movie. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, you know, look for it online because it's always on HBO. I see it at like 2 in the morning. Yeah. Not to bring up 2 in the morning. I know oh. it's a soft spot with you. Well, you could have been watching some kind of water. But you know what I watched this morning? Real early, it was on. It has been on cable in a long, long time. Captain Bob. The King of Comedy. Oh, good old Rupert. <clears throat> good old Rupert, <throat> Rupert down. Pufkin. As I'm watching this, and I've, you know, I think you were kind of one of the people who introduced me to this movie back oh, in the day. Yeah, yes. And watching it again this morning, Rupert Pupkin really isn't the most craziest person in this movie. No, no. It's Sandra Bernhardt. Oh, no question. Masha. Oh, God. She's yeah. nuts. Yeah. I was more petrified of her yeah. than and Rupert. She was great in it, Sandra Bernhardt. When she he was, was, <laughs> she was in there trying to seduce Jerry when he's all taped up. Yeah. I mean, this this was borderline insane. Yeah. I love this movie. Yeah, her eyes when like uh, when Jerry was walking down when Jerry was walking down the street yeah. and he looked behind her and right there she was with her eyes and he walked faster. It was kind of horrifying. I mean, she, the way she's staring at him, she's like, you know, during the day I'm taking a bath. I'm like, you know, I'm wondering, is, is yeah. Jerry taking a bath too? <laughs> bath too. <laughs> it, it's just like, wow. I just want to get crazy. <laughs> that movie. Don't you want to get crazy? <clears throat> Masha, take off the tape. Yeah. Great movie, my, yeah. one of my favorite. He, I remember. I always remember the scene of shooting the Pez off of her flat, very flat stomach. The Pez bouncing off right. her, her belly, <laughs> and he's chasing her, and she's yeah. chasing him down. The street. Doesn't he Jerry? punch her in the mouth? He like slaps her. Oh, he slaps her. He slaps her, and then he just takes off, and he's running down the street with the tape <laughs> that, on his that Jerry Lewis with his, with his, on the tapes on his wrist and his ankles <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. No, here he is running down the streets of New York City, and he still no one recognizes Jerry Langford exactly. running down the street. That just proves how crazy 1980s um, New York. You know who made a cameo in that wasn't really known was Gerard Depardieu. Really? You're the French actor? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. If you go back and watch it near the beginning of the movie, it's when 
uh, Masha and Rupert are walking down the street after they supposedly saw Jerry go into a building, yeah. and they have that argument right yes. outside of Times Square yeah, yeah, yeah. during the day. I gave you my spot. <laughs> look, look at one of the patrons in the audience there on the street. It's Gerard Depardieu. Wow. Was he just sitting there as an extra? I, I have no idea. The fact that you picked up on it. I was like, I'm like, is that Gerard Depardieu? Wow. And sure enough. Depardieu. The opening of that movie, where he's where Jerry's coming out of the stage door, Jeff and I can contest this. That is dead on what happens when you go autograph hunting in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. that crazy. Mm-hmm. What have you, what do you, who, who would you have jumped in the limo with? Oh, I, I, de- I, de- I definitely uh, jump in the limo with uh, probably Peter Boyle or <laughs> something wow. like that. Peter Boyle? But, uh, uh, like, well, I got my uh, Jack Nicholson meeting, but I'd probably uh, jump in the limo with Alice Cooper or... Cool. You know, you had the opportunity to jump in a limo with, but you didn't do it. Boy George? No, Ted Kennedy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I could have done anything. I, I, like, I, I was like, like I, I was like, hold up, and I put my arm around him, and he just put his uh, thumb up and just walked on. <laughs> you, you I'm surprised story? he stopped. I remember the, uh, the video The footage. video, yeah. I mean, we were in New York City. It was a rainy, kind of rainy, misty night, and we, you were waiting for what's her name? I uh, like. I think we were waiting for Tracy Ullman. Tracy, yes, you uh, were. We were waiting for Tracy Ullman, and... It was a theater right across the street from Marriott Marquis. And I'm like, is that Ted Kennedy? <laughs> and and Jeff's like, wait, 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 wait. You know, South Boston Kennedys yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his, not even a limbo, his town car is right there on the street. He waddles no, he out, in, big. out in the street. Yeah. No one's paying attention, yeah. and like we're the, we're the, I'm like Jeff, Jeff, it's 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 Ted Kennedy, and he, we if you saw the video, I'm I'm videotaping it, and Ted's getting in the car by himself. No one's opening the door yeah. for him, the back seat. Jeff taps him on the shoulder, and he just turns around, hey, hey, hey thumbs up, but literally, if he if Jeff was a psychopath, he could have been like the new John Wilkes Booth. True, you, yeah, you you really did get close to him. Yeah. He touched him. He wasn't. He was. Yeah. He wasn't even. He was. He yeah. physically Tapped touched him, him on the shoulder. Yeah. Put my arm around him, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> Should have grabbed gotta... him right by the nuts. So we've actually <laughs> rubbed. We've actually rubbed shoulders with the Kennedys. Oh yeah, yep. Literally rubbed yeah. elbows <laughs> right there in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> Imagine if you just took his wallet. <laughs> yeah, Ted Kennedy's wallet. No one. But the funny part was, give me the rubbers back. He was a. He was a United <laughs> States senator for like a million years, yeah. and no one batted an eyelash that he was walking mm-hmm. out there. I mean, that's that's that says what New Yorkers are like. Mm-hmm. They just, you know, oh, really? It's that who gives a shit. But if it was uh, William Shatner, everyone would have been losing their minds. Oh, yeah, or Emo Phillips or something <laughs> dumb like emo. that. Speaking of Emo, I'm going to see the Dice Man Friday night. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you'll have a great time. I've yeah. seen him many, many I, times. I can't and, well, wait. I yeah. cannot wait. Where is he performing? At but the Cabot Theater in Beverly, where I just saw Mickey Dolan's of the Monkeys. Isn't, isn't what, Sean Cassidy coming there, too? I think he is, yeah. One of the hottie yeah. boys? Yeah. But, uh, uh, an interesting story. Uh, the last time, uh, a couple of years ago, when Isaac got to see Dice Clay, uh, I was up in the uh, first balcony, the first row of the balcony. There are not many people up there with me, but uh, like a hot, attractive uh, young lady with glasses and everything, Italian-looking lady, mm. was chilling out with us and everything. And I was, uh, I was uh, like, uh, you know, uh, he does his rhymes at the at the end of every show, and uh, uh, like uh, like I was up there doing them, the real uh, quoting them as best I could. Good. She was applauding and laughing, and uh, it was a good night. So uh, the, the ne- very next day, when Dice Clay was doing his book signing at the Barnes & Noble at the Prudential, mm. so I, I'm over there to get my book signed and uh, meet him properly. And, there, and uh, when I got in to meet him, the, that lady that I was with was it happened to be his wife. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, and she what? was like, honey, I was hanging out with this guy last night. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. You were hanging out with this jerk off. <laughs> he took at least eight pictures. I took, I got a picture with the whole Dice Clay family. Wow. His kids and everything, but they were very cool and everything. I, I, couldn't, I, have, I couldn't have asked for a better Dice Clay meeting. I'll, I'll give a review on the next episode. But yeah, it was, it was Do you know great. what Andrew Dice Clay's real last name is? So uh, Yes, yeah. Andrew Silverstein. Andrew Silverstein. He yeah. was on an episode of MASH. And was he, he really? And yes, he was. Here's another thing I bet you didn't know. Do you know who his roommates? Uh, he had a couple of roommates when he lived in New York. Uh, it, was Hol- two it, was, of them. it was Hollywood. Oh, okay. When he lived in Hollywood, he had two very famous roommates. I will not say it because I know who they are. Bobcat Goldwyn. No. No. 
You mentioned Sean Cassidy. Doesn't he do the do on the Okay, on, yeah, well, like uh, on, one, on. one movie star right. and uh, one uh, semi famous comedian. Think, let, 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 let me try to do a mind meld here with yeah. you, Ricky Bittman. Semi famous comedian. <clears throat> right, so this was 1981 <laughs> or two. Okay. Hollywood. The people who you were with weren't really famous at all. In fact, they weren't, they, they, you know, one of them was actually the comedian that Jeff was talking about. He had two roommates. One who, they were both stand-up comedians. Mm -hmm. One became, well, actually both of them became actors. Okay. One of them became <laughs> uh, uh, the, one of the most hated villains in motion picture history. And the other one was a flash in a pan, but he was in a couple big movies. One of them was with Robin Williams. Yeah, he very big in Russia. Well, he came over here from Russia. Oh, Yakov? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yakov Shmianov? Yakov Shmianov. Uh, yeah, that was okay. one of his first, yeah, that was one of the two roommates. All right. So he, this what is somebody who's bigger than him. Yeah. What a country. So he's the one who didn't, you know, become the big, well, a big villain. In this in country, movies. we do podcasts. In Russia, podcasts do us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now somebody was bigger. He was big. I mean, he's not a household name, but his character is. As a hated villain. As a hated villain in a sci-fi genre. Damn. That, that's pretty... Dave Prowse. <laughs> no, he's beloved. No. I, the Vader's, but I, I honestly don't know. All right, I'll give you another hint. Hated villain. He's a hated villain... Sci-fi. You're not going to know his real... You'll know his real name when I tell it. I might. But his character. Everybody knows his character. One of the most famous bullies in movie history. Of all time. Of all time. Um, not Babka. Not the uh, Johnny from... Uh, no, not William Zabka. And William Zabka, Babka. No. Same, same era. Same era. How many movies did they make of this sci-fi genre? Three. Three. Damn it. I'm drawing a blank. He hates manure. Oh, Jesus. Your buddy from Back to the Future. <laughs> yes. And I know, yeah, I would not know his real name. Tom wow. Wilson. So he was Dice's roommate and with Yakov Smirnoff. Yeah. Well, what a trio that must have been, huh? Right. Wow, that's a Winning sitcom within itself. That's well, a I'm going to tell you, if I get a chance to meet him, I'm going to ask him about that. Ask him, he he get the fuck out of here. Ask him about what was it like room, rooming with Yakov Shmirnov and Biff. And Biff from... What do you mean I, by I never, that, that, that he hates manure? Because he doesn't like manure. Do you like shit? No, I don't either. Then there you go. You're in the same category as him then. <laughs> manure isn't really shit. Manure, without manure, you're not going to have any vegetables. Yeah. So when people say eat shit, you go, well, we kind of do. Yeah, we do. Shit. Look at that perplexed look on Quincy's yeah, look face like right that. now. Yeah. Have some uh, Cheez-Its. Uh, right? <laughs> milk, milk and Cheez-Its. Milk and cashews. Well, that comes, out, that comes out of a cow's ass. I had some Cheez-Its today. Jalapeno flavored. You don't like that, huh? No, I like to get good old like, uh, original Cheez-Its. Yeah, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Classic. Yeah. We go from, we talk from Yakov Shmirnov <laughs> to Cheez-Its. I love you, Quinn. What just, a country. He, he was looking kind of uh, like left out, so I want to make sure we talk right. about something. Well, you know what the Robin Williams movie he was in, right? Um, um, that, that Dice was in? No, that Yakov was in. Oh, uh, Moscow on the Hudson. Correct, yeah, Amundo. Yeah, yeah. You need some H2O. <laughs> How about, uh, do you know what Steven Spielberg movie he was in? Yakov Shmirnov? Yeah. I don't even think I know that. Okay. Well, Spielberg didn't direct it. He produced it. Okay. Well, This movie be... was actually directed by Richard Benjamin. Okay. Oh, oh yes, I do know that. That would have been the money pit. Right. He was yeah. the guy who kicked him out of the apartment. You're right. You are right. The plaster's come? In America. They say you out. Here's another one. Do you remember what Richard Pryor movie he was in? Oh. <laughs> who was it directed by? Was it directed by Richard Benjamin? No, oh, I don't remember who directed this one. But I, I, this is a Richard Pryor movie where Yakov Smirnoff played a cab driver. Well, gee, there's a stretch. Uh, didn't, he play, didn't he play a cab driver in Moscow on the Hudson? Oh, uh, yeah. He must uh, like playing cab <laughs> drivers. Yeah, yeah. A, mean, a Richard Pryor movie. Now, this wasn't one of the ones with Gene Wilder, right? No. Was this before or after Superman 3? After. After Superman wow. 3. So there couldn't be that. There wasn't that many movies he did after Superman. The toy. Nope. Shit. Wasn't the toy. So it wasn't. 
Wasn't busting loose, though, was it? Okay, give you another hint. Uh, like, no, it wasn't busting loose. Uh, John Candy was in it with him. <gasps> Brewster's Millions. Uh, all right. Do you remember the scene where, like, uh, he first got his money and he's like, uh, he goes to the first cab, c- cabbie he sees and he's like, well, I'll pay you a, 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 a million dollars to be my cabbie for a, <laughs> for a, for a, for a woman. You're going to pay me a piece of shit cabbie like me a million dollars? <laughs> what a country. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm so, now, is he dead or is he still alive? No, he's, he's still alive. How come he hasn't done these sci fi conventions? He'd make a fortune at these He's probably cleaning up in Branson, Missouri. I bet you that's where we're hanging with what, Greg? Yeah. So now, how much of this, how much do they soak for tickets to Dice Clay? Uh, you know, I don't even know. Tosh bought him. Okay. Is she, is she going? Yeah, we're going with another couple. Really? Yeah. They're not going to be offended by Hickory Dickory Doc? I don't think so. Well, Tasha, she, she got seven brothers. She's been around me long enough. Yeah, she's Italian, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, okay. no, no worries about that. Well, we'll give Dice our best. I definitely will. And uh, Yakov is 72. Okay, and, and well, how old is Dice? I don't know. But he, and, he, but he's, and he's still alive. He's got to be he closing in on 70. If he was on MASH, for Christ's sake, that ended 40 years ago. Andrew Dice Clay is 65. 65. Hmm. Okay. I thought he'd be a little older than that. Andrew Dice Clay. He was great on Entourage. You watch him on that? I did. Where he played himself. It was, he, was, he was a fantastic uh, addition to that. Thing. Okay. You had to have seen this. Uh, what was the movie he did with Leah Thompson? Oh, Casual Sex. Yeah, Casual Sex. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Are you kidding yeah. me? That beach scene? Of yeah. course I saw that movie. <laughs> you can ask him that. You can ask him this. T.C. Rustani wants to know, what did Leah Thompson taste like? Ooh. All right? Because I'm, uh, I'll ask I'm envious of that. I've only gotten a hug from her. All right? He went, no. I'm just looking at these pictures of him. He is too funny. You know um, who his heroes were? Lenny Bruce. Henry Winkler. Well, then he, then he based the Dice Man character. Oh. Well, obviously. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. Vinny, Vinny Barbarino. Okay. Um, he Jerry does do Lewis. a great imitation. Uh, Jerry Lewis, like the nutty professor, is uh, yeah. a lot of his. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. When he does a woman's voice, he always uses that. And uh, Travolta from Saturday Night Fever. He does a great Travolta imitation. If you've never heard I'm, I was always a fan of Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I, how many comedians can say they sold out Madison Square Garden as many times as he did? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, this ties back into episode 50 of the Jukebox. Because I talk about Rick Rubin producing Johnny Cash's final string of albums. Rick Rubin produced an album called The Day the Laughter Died. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, Jeff. It's a double uh, CD. Of course I remember yeah. that one. It was a, like uh, the black and white. He's sitting black in and white. Sit, uh, yeah, he's sitting in like a junkyard on yep. a trash can uh, yeah. by a fire. And by he's a just, trash can fire. And it's just a club <laughs> performance, right? Yeah, and it was, I think it was recorded over two nights, if I, if I remember correctly. But Rick Rubin produced this. And it was basically... Get up on stage with no prepared material. And I never knew that when it came out. So I had to revisit it on YouTube. I have the CD somewhere. So I went to YouTube and I downloaded and listened to it. And it's, if you think of it in those, that context and listen to it, how amazing it is that he just did this off the top of his head. Because in the middle of it, a couple gets up and walks out. And that's really one of the funniest parts of the whole album. I actually it enjoyed is. Adventures yeah. of Ford Fairlane. Good movie. Wayne Newton was in that. Wayne Newton. Yeah. Priscilla uh, Presley. Gilbert yeah. Godfrey. Gilbert. I mean, Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Vince <clears throat> Neal from Molly Crew, Ed O'Neill. And he was also on the show, Showtime show Dice Rules, which got canceled way too early. It was hilarious. And he was in uh, the, the uh, Born, uh, Star is Born with uh, Lady Gaga. Really? Played her father. See, yeah, he did an excellent yeah, job. He did. It was uh, a like, great uh, cameo. Yeah, like uh, he's he, like uh, there's the the scene when uh, like uh, all right, uh, like uh, Bradley Cooper's character gets the award and pisses his pants, yeah, and then yeah. like uh, and then Dice pulls him off stage and and says one of his uh, one of his uh, classic lines: "What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> well, I hope you get to meet him after the show. Yeah, we'll try. You gotta get, you know, get a pic. Try to get a picture I'll, with him. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I mean. I I don't have the talent you guys have. Yeah, it's simple to do. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you'll see some of the autograph hounds. Oh, there. yeah. I'll keep an eye peeled. All right, Quincy, wrap the show up. Well, thank you for watching this very interesting, um, high-powered episode. High-octane. Uh, high-octane episode. Uh, and remember, first of all, drive mm. home carefully. Mm. Thank you for watching. And remember, we never, never close. close. Good night. I got to get to bed.